Some people, they are good doing nothing, and they will, they will invite you to do with them. There's one thing that all of us have in common. It's the same amount of time. Time is unstoppable. You cannot stop the time. Just no matter what you do, you cannot stop the time. There are people who would pay millions to extend the lifetime. But when the clock stops, that's it. The one fact of time is time is unstoppable, but it can be controllable. You can control the time, depending on what you do with time. And uh, another fact of time is that who you are and what you become is the result of how you spend your time. We have different height, different weight, different color, even different pigmentation. Like my wife, she's lighter than me, and I'm darker than my wife. We come from different country, continent, family, and the culture. We have different social economic status. Some of us, we, can, we have big pockets. Some of us, we have small pockets. But let me just repeat again. One thing that we all have in common is time. And your time starts the day you were born. That's when it starts. It's a race. There's no way to slow down. You're going. That's no matter what you do. It's going. Even when you're sleeping, it's still going. And your time ends the day God called you. Time is the most valuable and the precious commodity, and that he cannot be replaced. Let me just share with you my thought on why God gave me and I gave you New Year. For me, New Year offers you a chance to reset and refocus your priorities. That's number one for New Year's. Take a moment in the next few days to conduct a thorough review of your life. Ask yourself, are the things that you are doing they are truly important or they are just urgent? Ask yourself and uh, don't confuse urgency with importance. So are the things that you are doing now, are they just important or just doing because it's urgency? Ask yourself. A new year offer you a fresh opportunity to sit down. We don't like sitting down. To sit down, analyze, and redefine your life purpose. Sit down and plan it. Analyze it. Ask yourself, are you still on the right track to fulfill what you were born to do? You're not just a number. God created you with a purpose. There's something that was lacking in this world. That's why God created you. And ask yourself, am I doing what I was born to do? Or am I doing what my, my parents told me to do? Or am I doing what I see everybody doing? So a new year, a new beginning, give you a chance to ask yourself, am I doing that? A new year, again, provide you with, with opportunity to redefine your life vision. What's your vision? For yourself, for your family, for your career, for your professional life. Do you know exactly if I ask you now what do you want to achieve in five or ten years? Do you know? Or are you just waking up every morning like a bird and flying around?
Do you have a plan? that is going to guide you for the next at least three years. Make a plan. Whatever you are missing, create a plan for that. Have a plan for the next three to five to ten years. That's what I'm going to do with myself. And I focus on that. Allow God to guide you. A new year also provides you with opportunity to set a meaningful goal. Your vision and your goal. Goal that should be worthwhile. Goal that should last for the rest of your life. Jesus had one goal in life. Saving us. And if you check Jesus, every book, that's no matter where, he will tell you one thing about Jesus. He died to save us. There was a man in the Bible, he lived about 900 years. Methuselah. Yes. And uh, you know, throughout all Bible, there's one sentence about this man. And I was, you know, like reading, trying to understand why there was only one sentence about that man. Because the Bible is a collection of stories of people who made a difference to serve to us as a reference. And that, that man was in the Bible to tell us that when you live for a long time and you don't do anything meaningful, you don't have no goal, there will be only one sentence of you. He lived and he died. All this time. So when you die, what are we going to talk about you? You can establish goal that to waste your time. Because they don't take you to nowhere. They don't help you to fulfill your vision. So go back to your drawing table when you go home today. Sit down. Think. Don't be afraid to start crossing things that is no longer relevant for you, including some people. Take some time and think about yourself. I'm not telling you to make them as your enemy, but check the time I'm giving to this relationship, to these people, what value is adding to my spiritual life? What value is adding to me? So don't be afraid to give up on things that are not important anymore. Some of the things that we are doing, they are not important anymore. We know them. Some of us, we are doing things that add no value. We have things in our house that is taking our time away. Get rid of them. You know, one of these days, I canceled most of my subscription, and I noticed that I'm saving a lot of money. Netflix, all of these, all of that, I canceled them. I don't watch them. I don't need them. They are no adding value to me. So I cancel them. And I'm having money. I said, wow. And that money I can use to do something better. Buy some bond, invest in some share, give to church, help family back home. See? You buy bond today, in 10 years, your family, is, there's something for them. If you don't want the money, give back to church. And that 10 pound a month is enough for you to set up your future. Do that. Don't be afraid to confess to God that you fell off the track. And ask him to guide you back to his purpose for you. It is better to do it now while you have time. Don't leave it for tomorrow. It's hard to live not knowing why you're living. And some of us, or some of you, because I'm no longer in that club anymore. Now I know why God made me. But some of us, we don't know. We just wake up, we go every day. We, don't, we have no idea. Some people, they don't even know what day of week we are. And some of you have, have a friend that do that. I don't, want to tell some, I don't want to say some of you are one of them. 
You know, so it's better for you to start watching what you're doing with yourself because you don't have forever to live. Open your Bible in Ephesians 5, 14. It says, this is why it said, wake up, sleep in, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. Oh, Christ will shine on you. Paul was not talking to people who was physically sleeping. No, that's, Paul was not talking to people who was in their bed, you know, sleeping. No. Paul was speaking to people who were sleeping through life. Same boring day-to-day routine. Same morning and evening ritual. You know why it become ritual? Because they do it without thinking. Even close their eyes, they can do it. Same clothes every single day. Same friends. Sometimes it's good to have the same friends. But some of them, they're not taken to nowhere. Think. If you want to be a nurse, don't create a great relationship with a mechanic. They might fix your car, but they're not going to take you. They're not going to inspire you to be a nurse. So some of these friends you have, they should not be your first priority anymore. And now, if you're my friend, and if I'm not picking your call, now you know why. Same habit and a hobby every single day. Paul is telling you, wake up. He says, wake up, because you can spend all your life, you can spend a year of your life sleepwalking. And it's nice when, it's, when you live sleepwalking. You have no stress. That's no matter what happens, it does not affect you. That should not be our behavior as a Christian. Look at the verse and take your pen and underline in your Bible. Wake up, O oh sleeper. Are you not a sleeper? Raise. That means you have to get yourself up. Raise means that no one is going to change your condition, but you're going to change it. Not even God will change your condition. Because faith, when you pray, is for God to give you direction. But your action is what counts. God will tell you, or God will get someone to tell you, there's a job opening in that company. But angel will not come from heaven and do your CV and, take, and go for interview for you. You have to get yourself up and go and do it yourself. So raise mean you have to change yourself. God is busy with something else. He's not going to come down and, and start cooking for you. Race is self-initiation action. Nothing will change this year until you change it. My car needed to fix, you know, the, the light came on on first day. I can be praying for 500 years for light to go off. If I don't take it to mechanic or to, to, or to the garage, he will not go. The light will be there. I can pray tomorrow, pray next week, pray every day. Ask my wife, ask all of you wasting your time. The light's not going. I have to take it to the garage. You are awake. Maybe you did not raise. You might know what's wrong around you, but you don't change it. You know why? You woke up, you didn't get up. Paul is telling you, wake up, get up, and run. In 
And uh, when you do that, when you hear the advice from Paul, Christ will shine upon you. It's there, you can read it. Christ will not shine upon you if you're still in the same mess. He will not. He tells you, come as you are, but you have to do, you have to come as you are. But when you arrive here, you're not going to be the way you are. You're going to, ch- you're going to change. That's how he's going to shine on you. And if he's not shining on you, there's something that you need to do. And then when you come to God, when you follow the instruction of Paul, God will expose all your bad decisions. It's hard when you pray to God and, I, and the voice starts coming in your head and telling you things that you've done wrong. You ask God, can I have more money? Can you bless me with more money? God will tell you, I gave you 500 last month and you did not manage it well. You're still in debt. Why would I give you more for you to waste it? You say, God, can I have a bigger house? You have a flood, you're not even looking after a flood, you have a bigger house. God will expose all your irresponsible behavior. God will show you how lazy you are in certain areas of your life. Some of you here, you had some good business idea. But he's still there, somewhere. No, 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 no. That's a time for us to make change. God will expose all the wrong people some friends that you have been keeping, he will expose it if you follow what Paul said. Paul said very simple. Wake up, sleep, raise from the dead, and the Christ will shine upon you. If you follow that, God will expose it. Because when you start shining, you know when you take shower, you can see some spots you didn't clean properly. And some people are just like that. You need to clean them. You have water and uh, clean them. And God will expose all of them. Because some people you keep in your life, they are not adding value to your pocket. They are not adding value to your family. They are not adding value to your spiritual life. So why are you keeping them? Nothing against you, but if you're not adding value to me, bye-bye, go to someone there. There's 8 billion people in the world, not me. And he continues saying, get up. Raise, walk carefully, and be wise. Paul is telling you, be wise. Wise is the state of being or having wisdom. And uh, the word wisdom means applied knowledge. That's what the word wisdom means, applied knowledge. Wisdom is different from knowledge and understanding. Knowledge is information. Everyone is informed. You know something. Understanding is comprehension, is when you comprehend what is the information. But wisdom is the application, is when the Bible tells you, you should not steal. That's information. When you understand that stealing is wrong, it's comprehension. But when you don't steal, now you are wise. That's what Paul is telling you. And you know why Paul is telling you? To be wise. Because God never said, I raise and I walk away from your old life with knowledge. Because knowledge, you already gain a lot of knowledge. Last year, yesterday, this morning, what I'm giving you now, what you can read is knowledge. And I can tell you for sure, there's no one in Leicester or in the world that knows more than you guys. Especially about Bible. Some of you can quote the Bible from the end, from the beginning to the end. I met a brother one of these days. This guy said that he can tell me 200 Bible verse. I was, wow. I love that. So it's good. He's been blessed with something that I don't have. But that's not what Paul is telling you. Can I tell you this? This year is a year of practical life. Where everything, the theories, the principle, all the great revelation, all the great teaching you have and you know about Bible, and that God gave you, is for you to apply in your life this year. 
Start applying that. Become a Christian of practicality. That's the same thing I'm doing. If you know something that's wrong with you, start fixing it. Because you have enough knowledge to fix and change your life. I can tell you for sure you do have. The next statement, Ephesians 5.16, it says, make the most of every opportunity. Because the day are evil. Yeah. If you go to Hebrew, Hebrew Bible, and uh, they have like a Bible in that it gives you the meaning or the idea behind what it was written there, why they wrote that. He said that the days are evil, it's telling that they are short. You don't have long to live. Your days are numbered. So make best of every opportunity. If you have an opportunity to smile today, smile. Because tomorrow, you might lose all your teeth. So you'll be laughing like this, <laughs> that's not good, you know. If you have, if you have an opportunity to, to be friendly and greet someone today, do that. Because tomorrow, when you ring them, they might be gone. If you have an issue with someone, call them. Apologize and get good with them. Because you don't know what might happen tomorrow. If you have the opportunity to do something today, do it today. Do it now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Paul is telling you again, redeem the time because you don't have long to live. While you are on this earth, understand and take advantage of each and every opportunity with wisdom and diligence. When you see them, take them. Don't waste your time. I heard there's someone in this place, they want to start a care home business. They have everything, but they're still waiting for the right time. When is the right time? There's no right time. If God put into your mind, it's because that's the time to do it. And you don't have to go and buy a five building, build like a 10,000 bedroom care home. Start small, start where you are. Then you grow. If your spiritual life is not okay, you don't have to start praying by 10 hours. You don't have to start calling, just reading Bible five times a day. Start with one sentence, one minute of prayer. Get used to it. Then you will get them. This statement is found in the Job 14, 5, 6. And it's scary when you read that. Men's day are numbered. You know the numbers of his month. He cannot live longer than time you have set for him. So now look away from him that he may rest. And he has lived the time set for him like a man paid to work. Let me just tell you, you are here. Somebody paid for you to be here. You are not here for free. Someone paid for you to be here. Someone gave the life, the blood for you to be here. Starting with Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for you to be here. Somebody built this church for you to be here, taking advantage of it. Your mama carried you nine months in her belly, seven months, and it was not easy. So you here sitting, enjoying, wasting your life, wasting your time, someone suffered to put you here. So your days are numbered. Take good advantage of it. Continue saying, redeem and wake up because you, have, you don't have long to live. You're not going to live forever. Don't waste no more time playing. He's trying to give us the conscience of death. There's one thing I can tell you. And I want you to be sure of, you will die. Maybe by, by, by today, tomorrow, next week, but you will die. 
And I'm sorry to tell you, but you will die. So the best thing for you to do is get this as a motivation. And start doing something before your clock stops ticking. God works with decision and desire. So this year is here for you to be wise. Make change in your life. Stop wasting time on things that add no value to your life. Stop taking journey that don't lead you to where God designed for you. Just stop. Be aware of the value of time. Time is life. You know, life starts with time and life ends with time. So, make sure that you make good use of your time. Redeem it back. And he continues saying, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what Lord will is for you. In another word, don't be fool. A fool person is a person who knows what to do, but choose not to do it. Yes, that's why I felt fool. Because I know a lot of things that I'm not doing it, especially with my time. Because time is the main component for, 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 for better life, for success. In every company, time management is key number one. In cybersecurity, if you have to patch a system, now if you don't patch it, in a half an hour, someone's going to invade it. And you're going to get in big trouble. So that's why I have to work, work with my time. Because God is exposing me to a certain place. If I arrive late, I will be in trouble. So that's why I'm starting with myself, and I'm inviting you to go to the same journey. The most dangerous decision and the option in life is for you to choose to be an intellectual fool. Fool that know a lot. Fool that is well informed. They take you, talk to you, to waste your time, to do nothing. Then they will leave you behind and, do, and go do something for them. There's a, there's a fool who is well-informed, well-educated, with degrees and the master, even with a PhD, but they still remain full. We have a Christian that is full. Pastor. Believer that is full. And are choosing to be full. You know, time is running away from you. You have to keep up. Don't mess with your life. It's only one you got. There's no spare. You cannot just go to Tesco or ask the buy another life. When it's gone, it's gone. So I want to I, I wanna share with you very quickly, you know, some of the, the, the steps that I've been taking to help me to deal with my time and help me be a better person. Number one, spend more time with God. You know, we should give 10% of everything. Give 10% of your day to God. You know how, much, how many hours is 10% of 24 hours? If my math does not fail me, two hours and 40 minutes every day. Spend that with God. Number two, take full control and ownership of your time and write down your life plan. Write your life plan down. Stick it somewhere where you can see it. Say, in five years I want to be this. Write down. You know why? Because that will help you to stay on track with where you're going. It's like when you have a GPS, a map. He guides you. But if you don't have it, you'll try to get, get in all exits that will look good. But they're not for you. So keep the track. Number three, establish your priority and convert your time into opportunity. Establish your priority in life. There are things that you are giving time priority that's not relevant for you. So when you cut these things, the time you have, you make that into opportunity. Opportunity to read a new book. Opportunity to go back to school and get a better qualification, progress in your career. 
opportunity to start a new business, opportunity to do something that will make you a better person. Number four, choose only your passion and design your day to create value for eternity. For example, my passion is preaching, teaching. I like more teaching, not preaching. So, so what can I do to keep my passion alive? So I decided to design my life to create value for eternity. Paul, David, Peter, Ellen White, all of them, they designed their life and they created something for eternity. Ellen White died 100 years ago. But we still have her teaching with us. Something that will last for eternity. Something that will carry us to eternity. What about you? When you die, what book will be written after your name? What building will be built after your name? Remember, God created you in time, but he lived in eternity. So he placed you in time to experience what eternity is. And that you have opportunity to use your time, go to eternity, and bring a piece of eternity for us to experience what eternity is. Some of the teaching of John, some of the teaching of Paul, it gives us the picture of heaven, picture of eternity. Some of the teaching of Ellen White give us picture of eternity. What about some of your teaching? Is it gossip? Number five, make a decision based on your destiny. Yeah? You know where you're going. Oh, I can tell you, you're going to heaven. So make all decisions based on your destination. If it's not going to your destination, forget about it. The journey is good, but the destination is our priority. Number six, protect your plan and your priority. Protect it. Protect your plan and your priority. Protect it. Because if you don't know what you want to do, somebody will tell you what to do. So if you don't protect your plan, someone will write a plan for you. So protect it. And protect your priority. Because if you don't have priority, someone will give you priority. Some of us, we have no priority to be here on Saturday. We have no priority to worship God on Saturday. So some of our employers, they will give us their priority. And we will leave our priority to follow their priority. So protect your priority. That's no matter what happened. This is my priority. I know what I want. And I know who I follow. And you cannot trick me. That's no matter how much you put on. And that's no matter how much money you put there. Or that's no matter how, what offer you give me. I'm on my way. Number seven, for us to finish. Uh, make inventory of your association. People you associate with. What value are they going to add to you? One of these days I was doing a, a, a mentoring. And the guy pushed a data. And he showed us, he said that majority of people, 99% of people will never reach their destiny. Because of their association. And he said, the number one is your partner. I was, I was scared. I said, Wow. <laughs> Is my wife going to, to, to make me lose heaven? Then I remember, am I going to make my wife lose heaven? Because your association could take you up or take you down. So work together and decide. Analyze your association. Some people, they are good doing nothing and they will, they will invite you to do with them. They said, let's go. Let's go to where? Let's go. Let's go to where? Doing what? After do it, what I'm going to get out of it? Who am I going to become? So let's go is the most dangerous phrase in the whole world. Let's go. Let's go to where? Always ask, let's go. Let's go to where? Yeah? So after you make inventory of your association, check, review your investment. What you invest in your time? What you invest in your money? What you invest in your life? 
Is it worth? Think. As I told you before, I cancelled about five to six subscriptions. You know, Netflix, these, these. I was wasting my money. And then now, I invested my time in learning finance, and I'm using the same money to buy bond. It's investment. In five, ten years, my son has something. So what are you wasting your time? And the number nine, last one, is top pleasing everyone. Yes. Stop pleasing everyone. Some people that you are trying to be friendly with, some people that are trying to please, they don't even like you. They're laughing with you, but they don't even like you. They don't like your shoe, they don't like your hair, they don't like your clothes, but you're trying to please them. Stop. Live for God. What Jesus said, I came to please who? My father. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm more pleasing my father in heaven. So stop trying to please everyone. They don't, some of them, they don't even like you. I sometimes don't like myself. What about you? So start, stop pleasing everybody. Focus in you. Some of us, we dress clothes just to make people next to us. Just to show off. Some of us, we drive cars just to show off. We buy a house just to show off. We are struggling financially, but we are pretending. So stop. If you don't, if you don't have anything to do with money, I give my bank account. Send that to me. Please me. We love it. And, uh, and, and the verse that I love, he says, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. And this time is your time. This season is your season. So you are going to, so what are you going to do with time that God gave you freely? Eh? What are you going to do with this season? This is a time for you to position yourself in a place of control and authority of your life and your time. Because God gave that to you. So you don't miss the best that God has for you in this season. You have to change the way you think about time. You have to change the way you think about yourself. You have to change the way you think and function about opportunity in your life. It is time for you to stop being stuck in between deciding Am I going or am I staying or am I going back? Stop connecting with people with limited thinking, limited idea. Reach out to God because God has it all for you. And uh, remember, you, who you are and what you become is the result of how you spend your time. 